Hi, friends. I'm in the enviable or unenviable position to have two of kind of the most popular RVs right now. And that is the Winnebago Echo and the Winnebago Rebel. It's not often that you get an owner who has two and especially to get them side by side. So I thought it'd be good to kind of take you through both of them. What I like about the driving, their livability and uh, usability and, uh, and take that opportunity to just show you how they go. So we're going to start with the Rebel and you can see the difference here. And it's noticeable how much higher the Rebel is than the Echo. It's definitely more uh, off-road capable with true 4x4. The Echo just has all-wheel drive, which is better than most motorhomes, but uh, quite a bit different. The true 4x4 system, it's just like one of those old-school systems. The all-wheel drive is more modern. Uh, it's always active and always ready to go. The Rebel is a one-piece uh, van. So it's a Sprinter chassis, uh, Mercedes Sprinter chassis. Very cool looking, uh, modern design. Uh, looks really, really neat. The ground clearance is really what you are getting as a nice benefit on this. We could see that in comparison to uh, the Rebel. While the, the Rebel can certainly hide places, you know, and you can park a little more discreetly, uh, the Echo looks like a motorhome. It looks like you're driving a, a, a camper. The Echo has more space, more space, more storage, um, more, more room for activities. Another thing to consider is that the Rebel is diesel so you actually have a a diesel tank diesel is a little more expensive right now and you know there is some some americans really you know are scared of diesel i don't think there's anything to be scared of but you have to know that it is different and the echo the echo is gas so this is just normal gas um so it's a it's a little easier to kind of manage and deal with and i do want to say there is a difference with the the rebel you have um you're dealing with a mercedes dealer and in colorado sprinters are very popular so getting an appointment at a dealer has been uh i mean it's a challenge uh while this since it's based off of ford tra transit uh, it's easily to find ford dealers that can handle the transit and get things like done with the oil change on my first service for my rebel i scheduled it out six weeks Got it in, they had it for uh, two days to just do, you know, the oil change of their fluid check. While the Echo, I got same day service, was able to find a dealer that just took me in. It was a simple oil change, had, uh, had uh, in and out. So definitely something to consider, especially if you're, you're not near a, a Mercedes dealer. Uh, it might make things a little even more painful for you. Revel looks just really cool. Uh, I mean, it, it just looks like that space age van. Um, and I, I think it looks, you know, it had just such a, a presence and, uh, Mercedes did a, just a great job with the design of making it kind of neat and futuristic. The transit with the Echo, uh, I mean, she's, she's utilitarian looking, but I would, I would say a little more ugly than her, uh, other than her sister. So another important thing about both of them is storage. And um, you have this nice big garage on the Rebel. And the, the Rebel gives you all this space with the bed lifted up. And they're really great for kind of stuffing things, getting them in um, there. As you can see on my Rebel, I have uh, a rear camping system. Kind of what, what people love is this just cavernous amount of storage that you have. It is exposed storage and that, you know, if you're going to throw skis or anything back there, you're going to have to open the doors to get them. And then you do lose storage if you bring the, the bed down. Um, but what I do see is just people putting all their suitcases and stuff here, um, having it down and then using it, using it like a big trunk. I definitely recommend on a Revel. Uh, some sort of exterior storage. So either a box on the back where you can put all your outdoor stuff or uh, what I have, a hitch rack um, with a box, which I think works fantastic. On the Echo, and one of the main reasons why we bought it is you get this space. 
you get this huge garage space here right in the box and it's heated and so it's a huge amount of space that you get and so you don't have to live with all your outdoor gear in the back you get to live with it here instead of it being inside so instead of having a all your outdoor gear living with you, you get your outdoor gear inside your storage system, which is accessible on all three sides, has a great molly panels to hold stuff down. Um, really, really just uh, uh, one of our favorite parts of the Echo. Plus you get a big storage bay here for your other outdoor uh, toys or a, an outdoor kitchen if you want. It's hard to kind of show this, but there's two big differences also with the Rebel and the Echo. The Echo has propane, so it uses propane tanks, uh, easy tanks that you can get anywhere. Um, but the stovetop, the heater, um, the, the built-in furnace, that, while the Rebel is all, uh, <coughs> is all electric, there's two huge lithium batteries there that power your cooktop, nearly everything but uh, your heater, the furnace on the Revel is actually diesel. Using the propane on the Echo makes me miss that um, diesel heater because it is so, so easy to just flip on and have uh, diesel heat there. While well, I've had some reliability issues with the, the uh, propane on this. If we could get an Echo without propane, uh, I'd, I, I would. In what I call outdoor living, they both have awnings, um, the Rebel has a really nice table for, um, for kind of outside entertaining. This is a perfect spot for cooking outside, getting some chairs, having a beer, uh, which is really nice. <laughs> While that Echo's outside entertaining, it's a little more limited since you have all these bays and uh, storage. You don't get that cool flip out table. Um, that you have. I think if you choose an Echo without a pop top, definitely get the the kitchen. I want to talk about the living differences between the two and show you the differences of kind of how comfortable they are to live in. Um, you, you definitely, I mean, it's clear that Echo has more space, but there is a little more to that. So let's talk about the Rebel first. When you come in, you have a, a little fair amount of space, a little space, but you have this essentially this kitchen unit with the fridge you know a couple overhead cabinets a, a cabinet for um a pantry cabinet you know little garbage can stuff here another nice overhead bin and this big giant shelf that can use but pretty much that is all your storage on the revel and unless you use the, the bathroom like a closet, if you use the bathroom like a closet, you can add more sh space. It does have shelves, so you can add shelves here. Um, and that makes it kind of a little more livable. I'm, I, I'm not going to lie. It's a tight space. Um, and we have camped four people in here. Some of my renters camp three people in here. And if you're camping in the summer, it's great. You can be outside, spend a lot of time out there. But if you're three or four people inside, during the colder months, you're gonna you're not gonna have a great time. I would say the the Rebel is like a uh, a hotel room you don't want to stay in. You know, <laughs> you sleep in there, you may cook a little, you may have some food, relax, but you don't want to stay there. You don't want to stay there the whole time. And I guess if you're a solo traveler or a couple, it might be a little more bearable. But um, it is a small space. It is like um. You know, I, I, there was a reason why I call it a ro rover. It's because it's a li little, like a little moon buggy. So cooking is a, an induction cooktop. You can put it here, put it outside. It looks a little tighter than the, the Echo. Um, you do have a nice control panel for everything. It's all right here, which is really nice. The bed, I would say, is good for two adults not great for two adults and uh, the only kind of issue is that since you're right by the hallway one person always has to climb over um i don't think of any other ways to do that and i've certainly seen the more custom vans but losing that gear garage uh is is means you're losing one of the best parts of the vehicle let's talk about the bathroom 
This bathroom is small. I mean, it is more of a closet than a bathroom, but it's usable. You can use this bathroom. You can have a great time for, you know, for, for, for road trips or, you know, weekend trips, stuff like that. It is usable. So I don't want to scare people off. It is a small, the small, small, uh, small bathroom, a small facility, uh, more of a closet. So let's talk about the Echo. So we're in the Echo now, and I think the Echo is more motorhome, which means that the interior is more of a motorhome. It's more spacious. There's plenty of room. And when I talk about that living room, you now have real passenger seats that are much better than the Rebels bench. You have um, some nice space up here for that the chairs flip. And then the most important end when you're living is the kitchen. Well, the kitchen is fairly good size. You got a nice sink, a propane, uh, propane stovetop, a microwave. And compared to the Rebel, you have this incredibly large uh, fridge, which is really great for uh, long trips. With the Echo, you have essentially a usable Instead of being the hotel room you don't want to spend time in in the Rebel, you have a hotel room that's usable, that's uh, more like a small college dorm. So it's a it's a it's a hotel room with a living room, um, and it, it's usable. It's usable for um, kind of that day to day living, so you're not rushing out. But again, it's a bigger vehicle, so that trade off is you get more usable space. But it's bigger. Uh, play music on it. That's awesome. Big storage cubbies. Some nice big cabinets. Um, really great for having stuff. Plus this little little place. The bed situation is way better. <laughs> way better than the Rebel. In the bed situation, you have two beds that can be made into one big giant bed. But this this bedroom compared to the Rebel is way better. This is a true true bedroom. And you get these great windows if you have a view, um, give you some fresh air, some great storage over the beds. Um, and then you also have some drawers and even a big kind of quasi closets on the side. Just night and day difference between the, the Rebel and the, the Echo. And then compared to the Rebel, the, the Echo's bathroom is a, a luxury. <laughs> it is amazing, this bathroom. You got um, some really great space, nice mirror, and then of course everybody's favorite party trick, a full size shower, which makes this easy to deal with and easy to live with. The Revel is very modern inside. And what you can tell is that Mercedes knew what they were building. It's still a little utilitarian. But you have a key that is just one of those radio keys you can just have in your pocket. So it has a uh, keyless remote start. Has a nice big display for Apple CarPlay. A very simple uh, heating and cooling controls. Some cup holders. So it is pretty simple. You have your, your 4x4 button here. And everything is controlled from the... Everything is controlled from the steering wheel. So you get a lot of control. Plus, the steering wheel feels great. I mean, it does feel like you paid a lot of money for this vehicle. And the, the kind of the surfaces, the details really are, are good. The seats, very nice and comfortable. Um, uh, they are adjustable. The only adjustment they don't have is height. So you're kind of stuck like this. But if you can see, I'm in a kind of a normal car driving position. I'm very high up. I mean, you are eye level with the truckers in this uh, in this vehicle. The other thing I will say is the visibility. Since you're so close to the glass, you can see the nose. You can see the sides from the mirrors. The visibility is very, very good from the front. I think both these vans suffer like you can't see from the back, but I think that's just how it is having a giant vehicle behind you. Both of the vans have adaptive cruise control, have some sort of lane keep assist have uh, blind spot detection. Um, the Mercedes adaptive cruise is just as good as the Echo. 
Um, but what I would say is the lane assist uh, is annoying, and that you can see so many people turn off the lane assist because it actually, sl if you hit the the lane side too many times, not only do you get a terrible beeping, but it'll start slowing the vehicle down and actually slam on the brakes. Um, so that's a little different. The first thing is this diesel, very smooth, uh, very comfortable, quiet, um, doesn't sound like a sewing machine. You do get power from the um, from the the diesel, but I wouldn't say it's powerful. Uh, you can get up and down mountain passes, no problem. But uh, compared to the Echo, this is much much slower. I mean that that the Echo feels like a sports car compared to this, where this does feel like you're driving a full size pickup truck. You know, it's comfortable going 75, 80 on the highway easy to get up to speed it's not quick to get up to speed but it's easy it, it it doesn't demand a lot of attention so i had a class a um rv and driving it was was kind of nerve-wracking i'd only drive it i would have a rule of would no drive it no more than four hours a day because you got kind of tired uh driving it. this is is just like a car uh, very easy to drive. It's not bouncy. It's not um, unforgiving. I don't like driving it as much as the Echo, but bottom line is this interior is better and you'll be very comfortable. It, or this, the, the driver's side is better than the Echo. The f materials are better and you'll be comfortable in it. But the Echo does have kind of a, a, a hidden ace up its sleeve. So now we're in the Echo and... Uh, uh, this key, this key, having a key and a dangling keychain feels so old school. Um, the seating position is comfortable. The wheel is nice. And your system up here, you know, it's a, it's a decent. Ford knows how to design cars. But you can tell everything is this hard plastic, like a Ford Festiva. And if it's all the... You know, it is totally a commercial vehicle up front. While the Mercedes gives you a couple of more refined touches like the wheel, this one's just not that. But the big thing is how she goes. Because I would dare this is the fastest motorhome I've ever driven. Let's go. So the... Echo, you know, he, he, it has this great pull off the line. It doesn't have really bad turbo lag, even though it is a turbocharged engine. It just is quick. It's quick to accelerate to go. And I'm sitting much lower, almost the same height as SUVs. So you're kind of, if you're used to driving an SUV, this will feel easy. And and this makes the Echo feel smaller than it really, really is. With the the kind of the power on demand, the quick turning, quick moving, this thing is uh, a race car compared to the the Rebel. Um, and it's one of the things that I didn't think uh, you know that it would make that much of a difference. But you know, on highway speeds, cruising, you, this thing can go. Obviously, it takes a little more time to slow down if you're fully loaded and you got everything back there. Um, but it is it is quick. It is a whole different level of performance. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with that. The cruise control systems, I would say, is just about as good as the Mercedes one. The lane keep isn't as annoying. The uh, blind spot detection, which is built in by Winnebago, is just terrible. Um, since it's not one unit, since you have a cab and a box, the difference in me, the, the two is this is noisier on the road. Um, I can hear more wind noise. Sometimes it sounds like I hear wind noise from the door as well as, uh, from the pop top. And it could be just because this is much more open. Um, and I do get more rattling, especially up here. Um, there's a, the entertainment system up here does rattle a bit. So you have two rigs with two similar purposes. They're both designed to get you kind of in the outdoors a little further. Further than a traditional motorhome, further than a traditional camper. The Rebel, I think, is really designed for two people. 
It's designed for two people to sleep comfortable for extended weekends. You know, to have a great adventure, to use that as their ski base, their camp base, um, to go out and have adventures. If you're a single person, even better. I mean, uh, it, it would be the perfect kind of getaway man mobile. Uh, and I think that's why they are so popular. So uh, personally, I love the looks. I like driving it. I, I, I get why it is so popular. And I think it'll remain, remain popular with that storage for uh, your adventures, the the garage, the ability to get that ground clearance. I mean, the, the Revel is just perfect if you are going to go out uh, out and about and way far, uh, and it's just two of you. I think the shortcomings of w w the Revel and its size made the Echo and the designers at Winnebago go, okay, this is, this is the more... <laughs> more enhanced because it serves the same purpose. You can go out about, go uh, dusty, dirty roads, carry your stuff with you. But the Echo gives you the benefit of space. We did six weeks in the Echo. We had no problems with a family of four. Two people could live in an Echo full time easily uh, because it, it just has much more space. And with that pop top, you just get so much more versatility. If you kind of lean one way or the other, you'll find the right one that's f for you. Um, well, I've been happy with both. Uh, with both, I have had, you know, a few issues with the Echo. I've been, I've had a few issues with the Echo. I had zero issues other than uh, a window with the uh, the Revel. Um, so I've been super pleased with both.